Welcome to Next Gen Software. In this lesson, we're going to go through the edges, the tops, the bottoms, how to trade them or not trade them accordingly. I wanted to go through this and give you a warning really quick. You're going to see this in our videos a lot. We're going to talk about the objective of you making $400 per day. Realistically, once you learn what we're going to teach you in this video, this is going to end up being your minimum expectation, not your maximum expectation. Uh, and you'll see how this is going to play out as we start going through the video. So let's go through a couple points that we're going to talk about in this video. Tops, bottoms, or breakouts at Fibonacci areas. These are what we call termination conditions. You'll hear that sometimes in some of the videos and in class. And tops and bottoms create an opportunity for either reversals of the trend or a breakout of the trend. And what we're going to do is we're going to classify a top or a bottom as either strong or weak, good or bad, absolute or iffy, depending on the pattern that is created on the charts with our indicators. The strong areas are going to create an absolute top or bottom, and it's going to allow you to trade in the opposite direction for a lot more profit. Weaker areas may generate trades, but those trades that go in the opposite direction of the overall trend are going to be managed a lot closer. And we're going to take a look at a bunch of examples of this. When you have a breakout of key areas, it's also going to create opportunities to trade with the existing trend. So I want you to think about something very important. I want you to start your chart analysis not looking for trades, but I want you to start it by looking for tops and bottoms. And this is going to be very important for what you do next. So we're going to take a look at a chart. And again, look, right here on the chart, we're looking at a breakout of a Fibonacci area. And whenever the edge or the last line of a Fibonacci area breaks, it creates the opportunity to continue doing trades in the trend, either on the 5-1 chart or ultimately, if you make a bad bottom from a higher spot to take a bigger trade. When the price itself reaches any type of Fibonacci support or resistance, it's very important that you read the strength of the trigger lines as well as the location of the trigger lines. If the trigger lines do not break beyond the last Fibonacci support or resistance, then traditionally you're going to end up with support that holds, or if it breaks, uh, support that turns into resistance that we'll be able to use later. Now when we look at a chart, again, you know, the market's going to trade up and down, up and down all day long, and we're going to reach Fibonacci areas and the market's going to stop. Um, and what I mean by looking at your trigger lines, if we have a strong trigger into a Fib the first time, it's going to be a top, but it's not going to be as strong as uh, one that has a different trigger line configuration. So you have to have an expectation. Yes, you could take a short if one presents itself, but if you run into some type of support, generally the market is going to bounce back up from that support area because of the prior strength of the trigger lines going up. It doesn't have to, but this is where we would require this resistance to break. So if you were short, you'd have to manage your position. Then as we retest the same Fibonacci resistance, we now have a terribly different, right? A really beautiful different trigger line configuration. The small triggers are no longer above the large triggers, which creates what we call a weak trigger line look, a lower trigger line weak look. And when after we get divergence from a Fib, which happens two bars later, then we're going to start expecting larger moves as the market makes retracements. Um, so as you can see just from this chart, we ended up with a very large move that was in the neighborhood of 20 S&P points. Um, so we're going to end up doing a couple different things, which we'll talk about in some different slides. Um, and this is really where a lot of our new users get tripped up is because they're scared to take a short because there's Fibonacci support here. And what you're going to find, and we'll go through and look at some charts, is the better the top, 
the less likely that this FIB support is going to hold. So this FIB support we'll use over here maybe for going long when everything's going up. But because of the top, we'll start to anticipate that that support will break. So when you're looking at our trend trade rules, and again, I'm not going to go through the whole trend trade video again in this one, but I want you to think about the rules. When the trigger lines are correct in strength, we're going to do trades. Number two, you know, this is where a lot of people get tripped up. Termination conditions, either absolute or conditional, right? Good tops or good bottoms. We're not going to trade after those with a trend. We could go the other way. But this is where, again, I want you just to see the rule. No trade if there's no room to the target. And again, just to go back to that slide, you can see how there's Fibonacci support here. And if you don't have the proper context of the top being very strong, this is going to end up being your profit target and you're going to miss the rest of this money. So we'll go forward and we'll take a look at it. Um, there's another example. And again, look, I wrote on here, not great. And the only reason I not wrote not great is because we're not at resistance. There's no divergence. So the market bounces back up again. And then the second time we bounce up to the high, we end up with this negative number of divergence and the market's going down. And because it's a better, great top, strong top, we're going to end up taking short trades. And again, should you have taken, look where these yellow arrows are, should you have taken a short trade after a not great top, you're going to have to get out if there's divergence or anything against your position. Because generally that divergence will make the market go back up to the high again, where we can either go short or after things roll over, do some type of subsequent short after that. Now, we talk about the edge of fibs a lot. So let's talk about Fibonacci areas and the edge of fibs. Again, the market does this a lot. It reaches the first Fibonacci area, but it doesn't actually reach the last Fibonacci area. And a lot of times in a strong trend, you'll reach the first area, the market will bounce back up, and then finally come down and reach the edge. And when we call it the edge, we call it the edge because it's the last Fibonacci on a chart. And not only that, there's a large void after that Fibonacci support. And this last Fibonacci line becomes a very powerful support for us if we have prior divergence or if the triggers don't break below. And if it holds, we end up with a much larger move to the upside, which you can clearly see. I didn't show you how far it went, but you get the idea. So you get an initial bounce up, which is not great, that causes one more down. And again, you see this pattern happen pretty much every single day. Um, and what you're going to be looking for, you know, as a new trader, we talk a lot about this in our trend trade video. You're going to be waiting for the top or the bottom to be made, a bottom in this case, and then waiting for the trigger lines to roll up to take trades. Or you're going to wait for a great top, and then you're going to start going short after trigger lines cross to the downside. We also talk about when the triggers come together, this is the time where we potentially could go back the other way. And everything that we talk about kind of ties together. Um, there's one section on this chart, though, that I talk about every day in class that I wanted to incorporate here. When the triggers are really wide on the larger chart, it doesn't always go up forever. And it's very important that you're able to see on the smaller chart when we start to have termination conditions. Pivot stopouts, divergence with a red background, pivot stopout with a red background. And you have to really know when to quit trading with the trend on the 5-1 chart. Does it mean you won't take another trade over here somewhere, maybe on a lower area, but as far as a 5-1 trend trade, you have to know when to quit. And you're going to see this happen a lot. We'll take a look at a couple examples as well. So again, you know, once it actually makes the bottom and the triggers are going really strong, I think this is a pretty easy look. Most of our traders don't have any issues with this. 
once the triggers the small triggers get inside of a large trigger on the large chart we have to really pay attention to areas and really what I want to do is I want to layer together three different concepts I want to take this concept with the triggers inside of each other and then I want to take the next concept that's in our trend trade video which says you know short version if there's a negative number divergence from a red Fibonacci especially without the triggers getting above it we're going to stop taking trend trades and the same would be true at the low if we have divergence from a support and the triggers are not below we're going to stop taking short trades and we're going to use both of those logics and kind of put them together. And this is, again, how we determine a great top or a great bottom. And you'll see this happen pretty much every day. I mean, there's very few days that this does not happen. Triggers will come together on your large chart. At the same time, you're getting to resistance with divergence and even a pivot stop out. And this is where you're going to stop taking long trades, number one, and then number two, if the trigger lines roll over, you're going to have a very good top and you're going to get some very big trend trades going the other way. The same thing, and again, this is the older picture, but we've used this forever. Weak triggers, small triggers inside the large on the big chart, followed by two divergences, pivot stop out, divergence from a fib, stop going short and obviously if you have an opportunity you can start taking long trades this little divergence and a little what we call a pivot stop out which is nothing more than you know a little farther than a double bottom here this pattern works on the small chart great if the large triggers are weak the same pattern works on a large chart if the triggers don't break below the fibs so if we get that same pattern on a big chart, the expectation is a big move to the other side. So to summarize the main points here, on your 14-2 chart, you must always check the location and strength of your trigger lines when you reach FIB support and resistance. If you have a strong top or bottom that's true, you're going to have to learn to anticipate whether you should pay attention to, you know, the small areas or not. So if it's a very strong top or bottom, what we're telling you is you're going to be able to ignore some of the minor things that are in your way so you can take the bigger trades. You also must also train yourself to recognize weak tops and bottoms because if you take a trade, right, which is perfectly acceptable if you get a top or a bottom and you do a trade, a lot of times your 5-1 trade won't finish because of divergence or a pivot stop out and you're going to have to manage those trades differently. And if you're not aware of what type of top or bottom you made, your management is going to suffer. And again, just to throw this out there, never counter trend trade against very strong triggers. It's almost guaranteed to lose, so just don't do it. If you're trading FIB areas after a weak top or bottom, again, you know, you can then start thinking a lot of our clients you'll see will use a larger chart like a 21-3 dynamic Renko chart. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to trade a strong trigger on a 21-3 chart and use the 14-2 area. Let's take a look at that picture. On the left, you see a 14-2 chart. And at the bottom, we make a weak bottom because it bounces up but from where nowhere there's no support there's not much so it's just a retracement and what we're looking for is we're looking to trade initially five one trend trades but you know at some point the five one tr chart is going to terminate down here remember this picture where we have the strong look but the five one chart kind of gives out that's the look which will happen a lot of times down here. You can't see it on this chart, but take my word for it. And the market generally, if it makes a weak bottom, is going to go up, but it's going to go back down again. So what we're trying to do, and again, you don't have to have a 21-3 chart, but it is helpful for these types of trades here. 
you can see that basic trigger line methodology, which is really strong triggers, and combined with a large gap to our large triggers, we're going to end up being able to sell this Fibonacci resistance area, give or take. This is where you'd use market flow for an entry or a pivot stop out on your small chart. And you're going to get this trade. And the difference here is you're getting, you know, roughly 17 S&P points versus waiting for everything to roll over and then making, you know, five or six S&P points on the small chart. If you just get a couple of those a day, you're talking about exponential increases in your, in your profit. Now, again, remember, don't get too married to a large chart that's strong when your small chart says otherwise. There was one of these that happened the other day. Actually, this was on the 12th. And I marked it up so you could see it. Um, I actually had did the short, but I didn't have my markers on there. But you can see this is a very typical scenario. The 14-2 chart is really, really, really strong down. And we're really committed to going short with that look. However, the 5-1 chart had divergence with a green background and a pivot stop out, which tells us that we're going to go back up to a higher spot. And if you can take advantage of these higher spots, and believe it or not, this one did go down to here and actually a little further, you end up making 11 points on an S&P contract for, you know, this one had a point and a half or less of risk after a down bar. Um, so you get 5-1 trades and you're going to get bigger trades. And this is the type of area where you'd want to go back and check that 21-3 chart to see if it helps. Now, another concept that's going to help you a lot with your management is recognizing the bottom down here. And you can see the triggers are weak, so there's probably divergence on a small chart that makes it go back up. And for whatever reason, it breaks through and it looks really strong to the upside. And this is where a lot of our traders are going to do a trade. I mean, you're really compelled to go long at some point in this look. Fibs and triggers and everything is great. Unfortunately, because we didn't make such a great bottom, this trade could give out a little bit. And again, recognizing that you don't have a great bottom before the breakout allows you to take this logic with this really strong trigger and make sure that you're being very judicious with your management levels with divergences and pivot stopouts. Because then it usually will run back and go the other way. So you'll end up with you know, a long and maybe a little loss or maybe not too much loss. And then as it rolls back down, because there wasn't a great bottom beforehand and we didn't, uh, we call this in class sometimes, it needs to finish the business of getting to a fib. You'll be able to start the assertive shorts over here and then some add-ons over here and really be able to take quite a bit of money. And then obviously it broke. So there's even more money after that. But as you get to a fib, you're of course going to read your trigger lines. So again, because it way over here and this wasn't a great bottom, it really still affects this breakout and the subsequent management of that breakout. And when it fails, it gets you a little more in line with getting short again a little sooner so you can take advantage of finishing the business. As you step back from your chart and you start analyzing your chart, you'll start to see not a great bottom over here. And the market goes up and it bounces down and ends up going up anyway, which is fine, right? Sometimes they go down all the way, sometimes they don't. And then we end up with what's a really great look after the triggers are up, the edges of fibs hold, and we end up, you know, again, you're looking for long trades all the way up until we get up to resistance with weak triggers. And then it starts the same thing in reverse. You know, once the triggers roll, you get a little short, but then after the subsequent breakout of fibs, then we get a great short. And you can see that great short takes us back down, weak triggers, and it really kind of repeats the process again. 
And it does this same pattern where, you know, they overrun, they come back and retest, and then they go up. They do this all the time. And again, not that you won't take a trade on a small chart, but you may have to manage it because of the not great bottom. And then after a really great bottom, you're going to have much better long trades that have a lot more follow through. Now, one of the other things that's in our plan, and again, this one's uh, in our trading plan. If you get to an edge, so a lot of times you'll see a slight overrun of a FIB, but the triggers are really weak. And we're, remember what we said about divergence and pivot stopouts at FIBs. This is when we're stopped to, you know, we're not thinking about going long anymore. Um, and sometimes they'll put in another divergence and, you know, they just kind of overran the top a little bit. And then what we want to do is because we recognize it might be a top is we want to try to get short as quickly as we can, as close as we can to the edge after the trigger lines roll. Um, and, and once you start getting really good at, you know, which areas are going to be good tops or bottoms, you'll really start to take advantage of some of these trades from the edges, which are going to get you a lot more money than if you just waited for all of the trigger lines to roll and then you sold a mid band and you made four points, which is still good. But if you're short from 22 down to 12, you make an awful lot more money than 17 to 12. And then once you get to a bottom, you start to process over again. Is it a good bottom because of the trigger strength? No. So even though we have divergences from a FIB, which says we have to wait until it breaks or this rolls up again, Right? We can still very clearly read the strength of the bottom and we know whether we should take a trade off of that bottom or not. And again, this is all going to bring you back into your trend trade rules. Every trade we do, with very rare exception, is fibs and triggers in the right look. And you're going to be spending most of your time, you know, looking at the fibs and triggers and trying to find a trade. Again, this is another trade from our trading plan which is one of our easiest trades, right? With all of the trigger lines going up. However, I want you to think about what happened before it from now on. Was it a good bottom? Was it a break out of fibs? And if so, you're going to end up with more profit generally. Now, the management of your trades is also going to be affected by what happened before or after your trade as you've already seen, but we're going to look at a couple examples. If you have a not so great top, you may have to manage a position on your small chart. Um, and really what I'm more interested in is down here at the bottom at this blue support. Because if our triggers are up, right, I wrote it here, triggers are up and we have uh, bullish uh, divergence potential, we're going to be looking to buy this Fibonacci support if a 21.3 chart agrees because we didn't make a great top. So even if you took a trend trade and lost, you're going to get a second bite at the apple down here. And this is where, you know, it's not this trade that's going to be difficult for you. In the beginning, it's this right here that's going to be difficult for you because you're going to go long at the lows believing in the low. But you're going to get scared out with a red background and divergence. And what you're going to have to get used to is the concept that we talked about, that if you make a really good bottom, you're going to have to ignore the little stuff so you can get paid the rest of your money. And it's hard because, you know, you're looking at this and it feels like it's going to go against you. And again, when do you ignore those things and when do you not? And you have to get really used to the looks off of the lows and where we should go to finish the business. So if you're looking at your large chart, you're thinking blue support up to the red resistance, which ends up being, I can't see the price exactly, but it ends up being about 14 S&P points. And if you're long from the low and you hold through this, then you can add on to your position as long as you get another signal. So you really start to maximize the potential of your Fibonacci software. Let's look at another example. 
when a trend trade starts from a very powerful low, not shown here, but you have to take my word for it, and you take a long trade or you take a pivot stop out long, this is where new users really get nervous because they see divergence and they're thinking, oh my God, I got to get out. Or they see two or three divergences and they're thinking, I have to get out. Again, two things are going to be in play here. As long as the small triggers remain outside the large triggers, divergence doesn't exist. It's even more powerful when you start off from a really, really good low. Because when you start off with a very powerful low before you do trend trades, these usually finish the move up to the targets. Um, so hopefully this is going to help you think about your management from those key support and resistance areas. Again, assuming a great top in place in your short, you know, when you get to number one and you get a couple divergences, you're not going to jump out of your position at number two and only to watch it go down. And if you do take profit at one to ones, you're going to look at your triggers and say, I can do one more because the triggers are outside. And then remember the picture, right? Eventually the colors change and the triggers are getting above and we have divergence and divergence and a pivot stop out. It's okay to be done on the five one chart. Then you shift your attention up to resistance and you think about, did you make a weak low? What is my 21.3 chart? Should I be trading from the edges up here to get the rest of the move I didn't get? And when you get those moves, again, this is kind of what it looks like. You get a pivot stop out and it gives out and then it goes up to resistance. And if you get that move and you get those 10, 15 pointers, it's going to dramatically make a big difference in your life. Oops, no, I skipped a slide. Now, this is also going to be very helpful when you're looking at your 5-1 chart. Because you may get to a resistance and say, hey, you know, the triggers are too strong on all of the charts and it's not going to be a good top. So it allows you to think about, you know, if the large chart's strong up still, not, not taking short trades. And then ultimately waiting for the breakout so you can trade with the trend if you have a very weak or no top on the larger chart. This is also going to be true if you have a good top. You know, let's just say it's a medium top, which you'll see a, a bunch of, right? Maybe it's just a fib, but nothing else. Then you can say, hey, look, because of the look, I can take a short uh, against the edge, but generally on your 14.2 chart, this will go down to the mid band and you'll have a mid band and a fib or something on a big chart and then you'll get divergence and you know, the new users will go short again and lose and wonder why. And then because of the look on your 14.2 chart, maybe it was, you know, not strong and it needed to go up again. This divergence will end the trend trades um, and then you'll kind of resume the bigger trend again. So it's really important to make sure that you're looking at, you know, the condition of your 14-2 chart. And I want to put another thought in your head, which I put this in the trend trade video as well. It's not about trading the highs or lows all the time. We get some of those with the big trend. But it's about waiting for the areas to hold and the triggers to roll or the areas to break and you can make plenty of money. And again, you don't want to try to be the guy at the top or the bottom or girl at the top or bottom. You don't need to be. There's plenty of money to be made after a good top has been called and then you get really big moves after that. So let's look at just a couple of the top conditions themselves. And again, this has been around forever, but you see it multiple fibs with yellow one to one dots. Do not go long after this. This is our termination condition. If the small charts allow with this look, you can try to take a short. Another condition, which is also on this chart, is if you barely take out one of these cyan divergence lines on a big chart at a fib. Once you get back above it, you can't go short. And if it holds, it's a really, really good look. And then you get some really easy long trades after that. And this is not going to be difficult once you read your triggers properly. If your triggers are strong, you're buying the supports or the edges of support. 
And if your triggers are inside of each other, the resistances hold. And after they hold and you get divergence, you get a big, strong top that should push down considerably. And as you start to read your charts, this will start to become increasingly apparent for you. And you don't have to be in first. You just have to be in at the right spot. Edges of fibs with triggers going up. Pretty easy. Not a great top. It was inside, but it wasn't a great top. And it didn't even bounce. So, you know, maybe you had a trade or whatever. This is a great look. Once you break fibs with strength, that's another one of our great looks. And you can see, obviously, it took a long, you know, a long time before it didn't even turn back up on this chart. Same thing is true here on this chart. We make the first bounce to the downside. But because the triggers are so strong the first time, had you have taken a short or whatever reason, it's going to be short lived. The second time you go back up with divergence potential, you get to the edge of fibs, the last fib, which is what we love to see. And then after the second bar down, it's to the downside indefinitely. And as you work your way forward through a chart, you'll make a bottom, but you'll see it's not a great bottom, which means you can sell the top. And you just repeat this process over and over and over, and you're going to get some big trades, number one. You're going to get all of the breakout trades. And then if the triggers roll after a key area, you're going to end up with uh, some really great trades. So again, one more chart and then we'll be done with this. You get the idea. Not a great bottom. It's probably going to bounce down one more time. Then we hit the one to ones with our large triggers up. And again, you're not trying to trade down here. You're trying to trade after things roll back up and find 5-1 trend trades. <clears throat> and if you just got this one and this one, you made a ton of money. And then when you get to a great top, fibs and 1-to-1s one and weak triggers, you're not trying to trade the top. You're trying to wait for the triggers to roll. And remember what we said about the little areas breaking after a great top? Look, short, short, short. Oops. Short again, short again, short again, and you made all kinds of money after a great top to the short side, not worrying too much about Fibonacci supports along the way. So to recap, you know, again, we are very committed to you and defining and refining these conditions. None of these patterns are new, but you may not have thought of them as looking at the termination or the tops and bottoms first before looking for trades. So start your analysis on the large charts first from the prior swing or two. And I want you to gauge whether it's a great look or a weak look. And we'll spend more time with this on class as well. And once you see the proper good looks for tops or bottoms versus weak looks for tops or bottoms, your trading is going to get much, much easier. Again, just a warning, don't take trades that are counter to really strong triggers on the 14-2 chart. It's just a bad idea. They fail all the time. Wait for the break or roll when the triggers are really strong. And most importantly, the best thing you can do for yourself is to annotate your charts on why you took a trade and post that picture in class so we can go through your charts, make sure you're reading the indicators properly, Make sure you're managing your trades properly and help you reach those goals and objectives. I appreciate the time. I look forward to seeing everybody in class.